Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willy here, and today we're looking at some of the strangest items that are best in slot for the PvE category. If you think gearing is confusing on retail, it has nothing on some of the best items in Classic. Certain classes and specialisations favour different stats, and there are items that have very strange stat allocations which made them kind of useless for the majority of people and amazing for a select few. We're going to be checking some interesting items and highlighting what classes or specialisations they're good for. Also I'll be detailing what phases these items are best for. Some classes have items that are best in slot from phase 1 all the way to phase 6 making them a big priority. Finally, I'll look how easy or difficult these items are to obtain and give you an idea how realistic you are getting them. Let's start off with a combo of items for the Feral Druid tanks out there. The Warden Staff, Smoking Heart of the Mountain and Mark of Tyranny. Notice one thing all these items have in common, they all have armor. The staff of course being a two-handed weapon and the other two are trinkets. These are slots which don't usually have any armor on them, making each of these items quite unique in their itemization. So you may think, okay sure, every tank likes armor, right? True, but druids scale the best with armor by far. Warriors, Paladins, and even Shamans have a talent to gain an extra 10% contribution from their armor. Druids, however, gain a massive 360% armor contribution whilst in dire bear form, as well as with another 10% from a talent too, meaning they can achieve the best physical mitigation in the game. Gaining extra armor from these item slots that usually don't contain it is therefore the best option for the feral tank. Let's take a look at a next tier example. Warrior's best chest piece is the Dreadnought Breastplate with 1027 armor. We're going to add a 10% from talents to get 1130 rounded up. Druid's best chest piece is the Ghoul Skin Tunic, 411 armor base, add 370% from Dire Bear form, and we're just around 1500 armor. That's why Druids like armor so much. So, how can you get your hands on these items? Well, let's start with the toughest first, the Warden Staff. It's a well drop. This is without a doubt the worst way for your best in slot to drop. Even with raids, the items you want will drop eventually, and as a tank, your gearing tends to be a bit more prioritized. There are two ways to get a well drop, be extremely lucky or extremely rich. Good luck with this one. Fortunately, the trinkets both come from certain methods, though it's still not exactly what you would call easy. Mark of Tyranny comes from a quest to defeat General Drakisaf from Upper Black Rock Spire, and it comes at the end of a quest chain, which also needs you to have completed Lower Black Rock Spire as well. It'll take a while to get, but at least it has a clear endpoint. Smoking Heart of the Mountain is created by enchanters and is untradeable, so you need the crafting recipe, materials, and the enchanting level to make this. The formula itself is obtained from Lord Rockor in Black Rock Depths at around a 15% drop rate and is tradable so you will be able to pick it up off the auction house. Enchanting is no means a bad choice of profession anyway, but keep this in mind if you plan to be a feral tank at Endgame. Also this has to be made at the Black Forge, deep within Black Rock Depths just outside of Molten Core. So all these items are pretty great, you want to know what else makes them so good? They're the best items you can have for feral tanking from the moment you equip them in phase 1 all the way to the end of Nax Ramus. They are never replaced. From Burrs over to Cats now, we're still in the Feral Talent Tree, just a different form. The Wolf's Head Helm was very unique and opened up a whole new way of DPSing as a cat through power shifting. The idea behind this is to make use of several abilities that give you energy to gain a large amount of energy the moment you enter cat form instead of waiting for energy to regenerate naturally, allowing you to use your abilities much more frequently over the duration of a fight. And this is a good DPS gain over just staying in cat form and using your abilities as your energy allowed. And there are a number of different factors that you need to take into account to get this to work. Your energy goes up by 20 every 2 seconds. The internal timer for energy gain keeps going whether you're in form or not. The Fiora talent which guarantees 40 energy every time you enter cat form. The helmet itself of course gives you a further 20 energy whenever you shift into cat form and shifting in and out of form or power shifting correctly so you're timing your ticks and not munching energy procs. You can check out my druid video if you want a bit more information on it but I'd look at picking up some macros for this I mentioned there as well as some mana potions because shifting in and out of form is pretty expensive. And the wolf's head helm itself is obtained from tribal leather working and is tradable. Also, the materials aren't too difficult to get either, so you should be able to get your hands on one of these fairly easily. Just remember, this is only a DPS increase if you're power shifting though, otherwise just equip some helm with strength and agility on. And just like the previous items, this level 40 helm, best in slot from phase 1 all the way to phase 6, are never replaced. The unique effect it brings is just too valuable. 
From one helm now to another, we have the Lionheart helm. This helm is particularly notable due to the fact that it's so well itemized. This will be best in slot for Fury Warriors and Paladins for a very long time. 2% hit and crit as well as a nice bit of strength are all fantastic. Getting that much hit on an item was also much of a rarity. Hit cap of course is your top priority as any class that does damage. It doesn't matter how hard you can hit if your abilities aren't landing consistently. And getting your hand on one of these could take a reasonably short time or a very long time. By now there should be a good amount of people on your server who can craft this, but the schematic only drops from Ragnaros or Anixia as well as some of the world bosses eventually. And Rag shows the highest drop rate at about 3%, so there may just be very few people on your server who can actually craft this. The materials alone will set you back a lot of gold as well unless you farm the majority of them yourself. This is an excellent long term investment however, it's best in slot for retribution paladins from phase 1, AQ40 and phase 5 where the tier helm overtakes it. And for Fury Warriors, it's best in slot for the whole of Classic, since the Warrior tier gear is mainly dedicated to banking, so the sooner you invest, the better. Spellcloth Shoulders Back in Classic, there's spell damage, healing power, and then specific spell school power as well. When an item had specific spell school damage, such as Shadow for instance, the stat allocation would allow more spell power on that item, since only one type of damage could benefit from it. And many classes have best in slot items from things like this, but the Felkoff shoulders really stand out for me. Only two classes benefited from stacking Shadow Spell Power, Warlocks and Shadow Priests, and Shadow Spell Power was the best damage boosting stat for both, so it's easy to see why these were good. In fact, there's a full set of Felkoff items, including boots, ants, robes, gloves, a hood, and of course the shoulders, which were all pretty good. Not ideal for PvP though, these items do lack stamina. Anyway, in terms of getting a pair of these shoulders, it shouldn't be too difficult. Felkoff should have gone down a reasonable amount by now, and should be farmable in Felwood, depending on how busy your server is. The issue is the pattern, which is a world drop, so you're gonna either need to get lucky, or have someone who crafts it for you. For both Warlocks and Shadow Priests, this green set of level 50 seven shoulders was better than almost anything else from molten core they were effectively best in slot from phase one to early in phase three edge masters hand guards i imagine quite a few of you will have seen people spamming buying or selling these for a huge amount of gold in your trade chat they're such a good example of how weird best in slot can be in classic a pair of level 44 male gloves they increase your weapon skill with axes daggers and swords by seven these gloves are highly sought after by fury warriors as going beyond the weapon skill cap of 300 gives you a number of bonuses. Most importantly though is a reduction in damage from glancing blows. However, rolling an orc or a human means you do not benefit enough to make them worthwhile since you already gain plus 5 weapon skill from your racial abilities as long as you're equipping swords or axes. For all other warriors, these gloves are your go-to. So how can you get your hands on these? Well, unfortunately, they're a well drop. Only luck or gold will help you out here, or you know, just roll an orc and human and don't worry about it. For the orcs and humans, these gloves aren't used much, as the set bonus from Devil Sword is used instead early on until there's better raid gear eventually. For all the other races, these are best in slot from phase 1 all the way to phase 6, where they're finally replaced in Nax Ramus by the Gauntlets of Annihilation. And despite the upgrade dropping from AQ40, the real reason you can drop the gloves are because of a sword from Nax Ramus itself, the Hungering Cold, which gives plus six sword skill. These are a drop from Kel'Thuzad himself, so I can say that you're gonna be using a level 44 pair of male gloves to defeat the final boss of the game. It's funny how things work out sometimes. One for the non burr tanks out now there, a trinket combo which will see you through quite a bit of combat, demon's blood and force of will. Both of these are used by protection paladins and warriors. There simply wasn't many well itemized tank trinkets early on, so almost anything that provided a decent bonus to your survivability was key. Especially at low gear levels, more effort needed to be put into avoidance than pure threat generation, which you can then transition to as your gear improves. The most important stat these two items give is defense, and defense is trained through getting hit whilst leveling and should be at or around 300 by the time you're level cap. However, defense can be taken well beyond the cap through gear. Every 25 points of defense you equip will grant you an additional 1% chance to dodge, lock, carry or be missed in addition to reducing the chance that you'll be critically hit. Basically this one stat gave you everything the more of it you can collect 
the better. Force of Will can drop from General Angerforge in Blackrock Depths, and these bosses are quite deep in, but you can get there reasonably fast with the Shadow Forge key. This has a 20% chance to drop, so it shouldn't take you too long to pick it up. Demon's Blood is a quest reward from a huge quest chain around the Blasted Lands. This chain is made up of 20 quests, so it's going to take you a while, but at least you aren't relying on RNG for drops. Demon's Blood is replaced once you start clearing Anixia, so it'll be best in slot for a while in Phase 1. It's one you can make a start on while you're leveling, so it might be worth looking into if you're going to tank come endgame. Force of Will is replaced in Blackwing Lur, so it's best in slot from Phase 1 to midway through Phase 3. And this one shouldn't be too difficult to pick up if you're running some BRD. Mind Tap Talisman fits well into this theme of strange itemization, a trinket dedicated to pure mana for 5 increase. It was particularly good for all healers, since the alternative source of mana regen, Spirit, was still at lowish values early on. The raw MP5 propped this up quite nicely, and this item gave you plenty of it, especially useful for druids, priests, and the primary user shamans. That MP5 really never goes amiss for any healer. And this item drops from Magister Calendris. Now we've got hold of Diamol a bit earlier than expected already, and he's located in Diamol West. This item is best in slot for all healers except Paladins for pre-raid phase 2. Shamans ideally will have two of these even, and this should be replaced by Shard of the Scale from Anixia, which is just a straight up stat upgrade. And the final point is really about itemization in Classic as a whole. Your best item may not necessarily match the armor type your class typically wears. Remember that if a class can wear plate, it can wear all the armor tiers below that. For healers, cloth armor most frequently has the best stats, so expect shamans and paladins to want cloth gear, hunters and warriors to equip leather. At the end of the day, different armor types only really provide an upgrade to, well, your armor value. And if you aren't a tank or PvPing, this kind of doesn't matter most of the time. You go after the item with the best stats, not the best armor value. So that'll be it for this video. And despite the best in slot list being so easy to find and worked out these days, it's still going to take a good bit of effort to get fully kitted out yourself. It can be incredibly difficult to assemble the perfect gear when you have to take the gold costs and RNG into account. If anything, I'd aim to get the items which are the easiest or the items which will last you the longest without an upgrade, like some of the ones I've listed here. So let me know what you think. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.